So we put out a video recently about throttle bodies. So that's the, effectively the throat that the air goes down into the engine itself. And by controlling the length of those, you can control the RPM point at which the most power is realized, effectively bumping up the torque or the power band accordingly. So someone actually dropped a question about turbos. Could you have a separate turbo for each cylinder. So looking at the benefits you get with individual throttle bodies, it may on the surface of it make a lot of sense to just have a separate turbo for each cylinder. But let's just talk about the complexities of having multiple turbos and what manufacturers have done in order to set up multiple turbos and get those working effectively. <laughs> So the turbocharger works by taking the exhaust gases as they flow, that pushes on a little turbine or an impeller, and that rotates a shaft which is connected to the intake on the turbo, and that pulls air into the turbocharger, effectively compressing it and pulling more air into the engine. So if you have two turbos, and you've got, say, a four-cylinder engine, it's going to be getting a much lower flow of exhaust gases. So instead of using four cylinders, you will just be using two cylinders. Now, you want the velocity of exhaust gases to be sufficiently high to allow the turbo to work. So when manufacturers fit two turbos, there's a, a number of different setups that they can offer. So you might go for a sequential setup or a parallel setup where the turbos are either pushing compressed air into the second turbo and compressing it further, or they're both coming on stream, maybe at slightly different points in the RPM range in order to deliver the power. And some manufacturers have just split the banks of each cylinder. So the exhaust gases from two cylinders are going into one turbo and from the other two cylinders they go into the other turbo and both those turbos work at the same time and at the same rate. So there's a lot of complexity. Now we're going to do another video on multiple turbo setups but the question here is can you have a turbo on each cylinder and the simplest answer is no you can't really it's just not practical. The exhaust gases coming out of one cylinder would not be enough really to drive a turbo. Now you can get very small turbos that will spool up and you will have a little bit of an effect, but what you lose is a scavenging effect. So that's where the exhaust gases are rushing out and they create a partial vacuum in the cylinders. So by isolating each of the cylinders effectively with a separate turbo, you're losing the benefit of that scavenging effect. And the cylinders are not emptying and creating that negative space for the fresh air charge to come in. Whereas if you've got multiple cylinders connected to the same stream in the exhaust, you get the benefit of that slight vacuum that's forming as those exhaust gases rush out and rush into the turbo. So manufacturers have also come up with twin scroll turbos, which effectively divert the exhaust gases. So in a six cylinder engine, they might take three cylinders into one part of the scroll and the other three cylinders into another part of the scroll. On a four cylinder engine, it would just be banks of two. And that would be optimized to aid the scavenging effect. And having slightly smaller chambers going into the turbo itself and by altering the profile on the turbine inside the exhaust part of the turbo, it can actually spool up fairly quickly. So there's a lot of benefits to coming up with that twin scroll turbo setup. And it was Mitsubishi who originally patented the idea and the concept of a twin scroll turbo. And it really is gaining a lot of momentum. Most modern turbocharged engines are using a twin scroll turbo setup, or they will certainly benefit by retrofitting a twin scroll setup. So I hope this has just clarified that question. It's answered that it doesn't make a lot of sense to have a separate turbo on each cylinder, but certainly you can split it and maybe have half the engine going into one turbo and the other half into another turbo. And that'll give you a fair degree of control over power. You can use smaller turbos, they'll spool up more quickly and you tend to get much better low end power, but probably not as much top end power as you would get if you were using a large turbo. But we can't really make generalizations. There's so many exceptions to the rule. There's so many engineering concepts to take into account when it comes to forced induction and fitting turbochargers to your car. So I hope this video has been useful to you. It's answered that question. If you've got more questions, please light up the comments below and let me have them. I'll come back to you as soon as I can with answers to satisfy your motoring curiosity. So thanks for watching. Please boot that like button because that really helps us to get out there. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. We'd love you to stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.